Okay, number, let's just do those three, 21. Plus square root 44, make sure you're taking notes, over 2. Okay, so we're not going to make the common error of trying to cancel the 6 with the 2 because the 6 is not the only thing in the numerator. In order to cancel, in order to simplify a fraction, the numerator, all of it, and the denominator have to have a common factor. In order for us to figure that out, we have to see if the numerator has a factor in common with the denominator which means we're going to start with simplifying the square root. 6 plus the square root of, we're going to split this 44 apart in a way that one of the factors has a square root. How about the square root of 4 times the square root of 11? Number 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so 6 plus the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 11. Number 2. And factor out of 2, which leaves us with 3 plus the square root of 11, 2, 2 and 2 can cancel, 3 plus the square root of 11. Now we kind of skipped over some steps that we wrote yesterday because well, at some point you're going to be to that point, you're going to be shortcutting things and uh, making this a little faster. But are there any questions? Not any part of that. Maybe it makes sense in the homework. Maybe you had a question. Okay. Well, we'll move on to the next one. Next is number 26. Negative 4 plus the square root of 32 over negative 2 times 5. Okay. That's a thing to do. Um, 2 times 5. But we'll uh, simplify this 32. That's the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. Okay, we've done 4 times 8, but 16 is a bigger square number. So we can pull out 32 over negative 2 times 5. Uh, the square root of 16 is 4, so negative 4 plus 4 times the square root of 2, all over negative 2 times 5. I don't really like the negative B in there. I'd like to cancel a negative with this negative, so I'm going to pull a negative 2 out of both of these. It's negative 2 times 2 minus 2 root 2 all over negative 2 times 5. Let's just double check that. How do I double check that I, that like this is okay? Because this is the same as this. Kids? There's the magic word right there. Distribute. We're going to distribute the negative 2 to the 2. We're going to do negative 2 times 2. Negative 4. Good. Do negative 2 times negative 2 root 2, negative 2 times negative 2 root 2, we get positive 4 root 2. Okay. So we did it right. We factored out a negative 2 correctly. Okay. And now negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1. And we're left with not enough room to write this final answer. 2 minus 2 root 2 over a factor of 5 is in the denominator. We can't simplify the square root anymore. We can't factor out a, a factor of 5 to hopefully cancel with that 5. So we know we're done. Any questions? All questions are welcome. Before moving on to the last one. OK. So then, the last one, number 30 square root of 25 times y squared times z. Just to make this a little easier to look at, just as we're learning this stuff, 
Um, I'm going to split this apart. Notice it's 25 times y squared times z, so we could write it as the square root of 25 times the square root of y squared times the square root of z. Every time we multiply things together, we can separate them out into their own square roots. So we can look at them individually, which maybe after you do this a few times, you realize I don't have to split them apart into their own square roots. I can just look at what's the square root of that, what's the square root of that, what's the square root of that. What's the square root of 25? Five. Why is the square root of 25 5? Five? Five. Five. five is 25 because this multiplied by itself gives me the thing right there inside the square root. So what's the square root of y squared then? Y. And how come the square root of y squared is y? Because y times y is some number and then it just goes back. So y times y is whatever this number is. Yeah. Y times y is y squared by definition. Y times y is y squared. So the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. The square root of y squared is y because y times y is y squared. And what's the square root of z? Square root of z. Yeah. Square root of z. What do we, how, how, if I were to write it, I might write some other letter, a or something, but I don't know. And there's no way to simplify it like y squared. So square root of z, it just stays square root of z. Now what's the square root of z to the fourth? Uh, z squared? What do you think? Z squared? Like the square root. Well, yes, the z squared. Just z squared? Yeah. If, it's, if, if z squared is the square root of z to the fourth, then just like the last two things we said, square root of 25 is 5, square root of y squared is y, then we should be able to take z squared, multiply by itself, to get z to the fourth. Does that happen if you multiply z squared by z squared? Is that z to the fourth? Yeah. Yes. Z squared times z squared is z to the fourth. What's the square root of x to the fifth? Third. X to the third. If it were x to the third, then we should be able to check it by taking x to the third times itself and getting x to the fifth. What's x to the third times x to the third? X to the sixth. X to the 2.5. Well, that's interesting. We're going to get these things called rational exponents, right? But that's correct. It would be x to the 2.5. But that would be kind of like saying oh, the square root of 2 is 1.4, 1, 1, 4, giving it like a decimal answer, right? So like, can, we, can we simplify this at all? Just like part of it? And then maybe part of it will stay inside the square root like we've done so many times with the numbers. Maybe like x to the square root of 4. The square root of x, x squared. Square root of x squared. And then an x outside of the square root. Like that? Mm -hmm. Maybe. If it were, we might need to take a few more steps to get there. Oh. Oh. We'll take some in between steps. Josie, I would thoughts? have done x to the fourth, like square root of x to the, the square fourth. root of x to the fourth. And then have an x on the outside. Have an x on the outside. And then you would simplify it down to get x times x to the second. X. So why, let's take this. Why is this x right here? To make it an odd number. To make it an odd number. Yeah, I like to make the exponent an odd number. Because I can multiply this x by x to the 4th and get x to the 5th? No. Is that what you're saying? Can I do that? Can I multiply a number that's outside the square root just straight by the number that's inside the square root? So like it's 2 times the square root of 5 is up to the square root of 10? No. You can only multiply insides of square roots together. So if I were to write this as the square root of x times the square root of x to the 4th, would that be true? What's x times x to the fourth? X times x to the fourth. X to the fifth. Okay. So can we separate it into the square root of x times the square root of x to the fourth? Multiply the insides x times x to the fourth. We get x to the fifth. That should work. What's the the square root of x? I don't know, but 
we just talked about something similar to this. What's the square root of x to the fourth? x squared. x squared. So we get square root of x times x squared. Square root of x times x squared. That just kind of looks weird because we get x squared over the x. So we just write it as x squared times x. Square root of x. separated it, maybe we should, to make it a little easier to look at, we can separate it as x squared of x to the fourth times the square root of x. And x to the fourth has a nice square root, it's x squared, because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So x squared times the leftover square root of x. What's the square root of y? Quite a few of you coming up with this on your own, so we'll just jump to it. Uh, how about if I split these apart into the square root of y to the sixth and y, you know, y to the first? Because y to the sixth times another y is y to the seventh. What would the square root of y to the sixth be? Josie? Y to the third. Why is that? Because you have y times y times y, and if you multiply that by itself again, you get y to the sixth, because y times y times y times y. Right, so this is y to the third, and this is y to the third. When you multiply y to the third by itself, another y to the third, you get one, two, three, four, five, six y's, that you multiply together for y to the sixth. So y to the third squared is y to the sixth. Okay, y to the third times the square root of y. All right, any questions surface as we're thinking about all that? Anything at all? All right, then let's put everything away. Take a piece of paper, blah, 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 you know, the, the drill. All right, for this guy here, we're gonna need to simplify the square root of 32, so that's gonna be 12 minus the square root of 16 times the square root of two over eight. Okay, that's 12 minus four times the square root of two over eight. Maybe we will use another little shortcut. I'm gonna to wanna to factor out a, a common factor that they have here that uh, we see a common factor with the, the denominator as well. What's a factor that these two have in common with eight? Four. four. They all have a four in common, right? So divide this by four, I get a three. Divide this by four, it's just a negative one. Divide this by four, we get a two. So I end up with a three minus the square root of two over two. And it's over. We're gonna try and cancel that two with the square root of two and leave it. Let me make sure I did that right before Cadence corrects me. I don't think I'm right. Cadence, go ahead. itself is four times two, so we could have simplified that even more. So we did 32 as four times eight, and two root eight. The square root of eight I can simplify again by taking the square root of four times the square root of two. Nine and five. Nine and five. 
So it becomes 3 root 5. Okay, so we dealt with the 45 so far. Okay, we're multiplying that by the square root of x squared. You know what the square root of x squared is? X. Right, now we've said it a few times uh, so far, I think just even today. So there's an x. And we're of course going to clean this up here in a minute, putting that, some of the stuff on the left, some of the stuff on the right. Uh, square root of y squared, did you just know that out there? Or sorry, y to the fourth? Y, y squared y. the other way. Y squared times now z to the fifth does not have a nice square root. We're going to leave it right as the square root of z to the something times the square root of z something else. Great. Just square root of z times square root of z to the power of four. Well, if we do the z to the fourth first is the easiest because I like the ones that are going to be simpler to be on the left side. Okay, so we got the y squared there. Then uh, the square root of z to the fourth, just like the square root of y to the fourth is z squared. Square root of z to the fourth is z squared. Square root of z, that's going to be done for that. It's just square root of z. So now we'll just kind of put some stuff over on the left, some stuff on the right, because everything's multiplied together, so we don't have to respect the order of it at all. Uh, so you got 3 times x times y squared times z squared times the square root of 5 times the square root of z, which would just combine to be the square root of 5 times z. xy squared and z squared times the square root of 5z. Because those are the left overs inside the square roots. Any questions on that one? It might be a little bit of a challenge, but the challenge is to, to see do we really, really work one of these? And it's alright if you didn't work all, all the way through. The important part is if you have questions, if you think there's something different, if you're confused about anything that I did there. Ask away. All right, questions? If you have questions and you don't feel like asking them right now, I encourage you to come in uh, some other time, before school or after school or prep period or whatever. Uh, this, so we, what we've been studying so far these last few days have been the properties of square roots. Okay, we're really picking it up, I think. And now it's the, the properties of exponents, uh, which I, just from our talking today, this morning, I feel pretty good about it. Okay? There's a few properties of, 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 of exponents. Uh, this is one of those times in math, though, where people feel compelled to take these rules of exponents and then boil them together in some little box and say, oh, and uh, when you have this thing times this thing, then the answer is this, like, to, to boil it down to these rules where you can apply them given the, the, the right situation. I hate that. Honestly, I hate that. When the book, and all books do it, as far as I know, I mean, maybe I'm just assuming about this book, but, uh, mm -hmm. nope, there it is. Definitely the other. Um, yeah. So they all do it. Because you don't need them to tell you that. You really don't. Okay? So let's look at one of the properties right now. We'll use a specific example. And we'll kind of try to generalize it for ourselves without somebody to tell us what the general rule is. Okay? So Let's just throw this out for everybody to see and to discuss what is x squared times x to the fifth? x to the what? Seven. The seventh. Now here's the big question, the really big important question. Why is x squared times x to the fifth x to the seventh? John, you want to explain? x squared is just x times x, right? which would also be mean that x times to the fifth is x times x times x times x times x. Yep. And they're both multiplied, so you just, they're x, x. Right. How many x's is it? Seven. seven. Multiply seven of those guys. X to the seven. So by the same logic, like a three squared times three to the fifth. I could do three squared, which is nine three to the fifth, which, I don't know, three to the fifth is a pretty big number. Um, So uh, 3 squared times 
this to be the fifth, we can multiply those two numbers together, or we could say, like all together, all at once, that three to the second to the fifth is three to the seven. seven. So we can apply it to uh, variables, we can apply it to numbers. Right? Do you see some kind of a rule that we could make up for x squared, or sorry, not x squared, but x to some power? times x to some other power. When we have x to a power multiplied by x to some other power, okay? Can you just add exponents? Add exponents? Okay. To be honest, did you, did you just read the book and, and that's how you know it? Mm -hmm. You just use your observations, right, from just one example? Or several examples. We've done this so many times, right? Mm -hmm. We've done it quite a few times. We did it a little bit uh, earlier when we were just simplifying one of the square roots. So we've got this many x's times this many more x's. All together, how many x's are there? Well, however many those are plus how many of those are, that's how many x's there are. And that must be the new exponent, right? But I really don't need to apply that rule every time, right? Did Sean need that rule to say it's x to the seventh? No, you just need a little bit of thinking for a second, okay? Josie gave us an, an, uh, an argument similar to that earlier on before the homework review. Don't really need to have this rule. You just need to think about what's going on. I right? got this many x's times this many x's, how many x's all together? It must be just add them all together. Right? The one last time, like x to the third times x to the twelfth. Combine that into one nice little package. X to the 15. X to the 15. And just to contrast that, now what if it was x to the third plus x to the 12th? Can I put that together somehow? No. Not really. I got x to the third plus x to the 12th. It's not x to the 15th, right? This is x to the 15th. And that's only because we're multiplying, right? It's just a bunch of multiplication. This is the multiplication with some addition in the middle. And if your instincts are telling you you can't put those together, your instincts are right. There's no putting that together. Okay. There's a way we could kind of simplify it. We could factor out some amount of x's. Uh, but we really don't need so. I mean, that's simplifying. That's all there is to it. Okay. So I'm going to give you, uh, like, that's a pretty simple example. I'm going to give you some more examples and see if you can figure out, like, what kind of rule would I apply? If I, if I saw some x's to different powers being multiplied together, I could add those exponents together. What about if I saw, I really need to delete this page. Yeah. Okay, so in your own notes, come up with an explanation for there, there is a way to simplify this. What you think the simplified version of this, and what is your explanation of why it is what you think it is? I already have our notes out from the, I don't know, the two or three times I've said take your notes out. Not only figure out what is x to the what, not just that, but figure out why. Brady, what do you say? I said x equals 10. X equals 10, you say? Like x to the power of 10. X to the power of 10. Okay, now tell me why that is. Why you well, it. I said that because there's 5x to x squared. Right, so this, so we'll look at the fifth power first. It means multiply something by itself five times, right? right. Something by itself, so okay, get kind of big. One, two, three, four, five times, right? Yeah. And each of those things is a what? x squared. It's an x squared. And x squared means? x to the power of 2. So x times x, right? Yep. Times another x times x times another times x times x times another x times x times another x times x. So we got all of these x's being multiplied together. x times x times x times x. How many x's are being multiplied together? 10 of them. We got five groups of two x's, right? 10 x is being multiplied together. That's exactly what the definition of x to the 10th is. And x is being multiplied together. I don't know 
divided by the third uh, to the sixth. So uh, somebody tell me what they think the simplified form of this is and why. There's six things of y times y times y. And if there's six groups of three y's, how many y's is that? 18 y's. So do you think we have a rule for y to some power to some other power? Do you think, Johnny? Multiply the powers the exponents. Multiply the exponents. This is going beautifully. We're thinking about it. We're using. Our, our reasoning capabilities. We're coming up with these explanations for ourselves. We're taking the power back, right? From those who tell us that they know math and they have to tell us how math is. Okay? We don't need them. We figure out our